This is the domain of Heteru. This entire area is dedicated to her. And this place is commonly called, the Arabic name is Del El Bari, but it's, um, its original name is Waset. This is the, these are the Waset, the Waset Mountains. Now, I want to, as we move forward, tell you the story of Queen Hapshitsut. Actually, her throne name is Maat Kara. And, um, and most, one of the most uh, depicted uh, scenes in this uh, rock cut temple with the, with the three terraces and the porticos on each side are these two trees. Originally, there were two trees here that were brought from the land of Punt. And we still argue about where the land of Punt in, put in. Some people say Somalia, some people say the Sudan, some people say Eritrea. Not, nonetheless, it's right here on the continent of Africa, not far from Egypt itself. So these were the two trees that marked that diplomatic exchange between Egypt and the land of Punt. This was not the first, because there were other uh, expeditions to the land of Punt in the Old Kingdom and in the Middle Kingdom. This temple was constructed during the 18th dynastic, uh, the 18th dynastic period, and the architect who's responsible for it, his name is Senenmut. He, in my estimation and, and that of many people, are on the same level of Imhotep. When you talk about architects in, uh, in Egyptian architectural history, these two names come at, right at the top of the heap. So let's move forward. What you see here would have been pylon. The now famous pylons that you know, these two represent pylon. And this avenue is what we would see. We, you see one, you see sphinxes here. Uh, an avenue of sphinxes of Queen, of the Queen herself, Queen Hapshetsut. And on both sides, you'd have found a garden. Now this place, uh, we are told, was described as a palace that favored the god Amun, and that it was made out of, of, of silver and gold, and that the light of the silver and gold illuminated the face and made Amun very happy. Amun uh, is, the, is the adopted father of, uh, of Queen Hapshitsut. Now, I want to say something I didn't say before about this temple. The name given to this temple is called Jessa Jessaru. Jessa Jessaru. And as we go up to the final level of this three tiered structure, We see the queen standing in the Osirian posture, wearing the crown of Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. The crown of Upper, the conical crown of Upper Egypt to the south, and the double crown to the north. Let me say some more about, uh, about this very clever and powerful African woman. First of all, she was not the only or the first one to rule over Egypt. But she was the most dynamic because of the things that she did. Um, she understood the opposition, the opposition to her. And so that is why she maintained, every time she appeared in public, she appeared as a male. She dressed in male regalia. And that's what I'm showing you here. That's, a, that's an example of it. She understood also that even though the, the, those who sit on the throne were generally males, that it was matrilineal. And she had a right, she had a right. But that's a very difficult argument to convince the majority of people, both males and females. So here's what she did. She proclaimed that she was the offspring of Heteru and Amun. Now how could you, how could you deny her 
her birthright if she is if she is the offspring of Amun, who is the most venerated deity in this area. And how could you uh, deny her of her position as queen to the throne when this entire area, all of this area, belonged to her her mother, Heteru? End of story. So she made a case for it. And up, when we go upstairs, we're going to see an illustration or several illustrations of her being suckled by, uh, uh, by Heteru or Hathor as a cow. Most important chapel in this entire complex, this entire mortuary temple. This is a mortuary temple that was dedicated to the god Amun. And here we see the goddess Heteru, kept by many capitals here. You notice her, her wide face with a cow ear, as well as her being represented uh, in actual human form. Over here, over here, that's, that's Heteru again. Cow is very sacred, not only in India, but here as well. She's a very, very important, um, she's a very, very important goddess. Over here, this is where, this is where she has cemented her, herself. This is the legitimate, she legitimizes herself by being suckled by the goddess Heteru. Heteru now is a cow, pure and simple. And there is Hapshitsa, Mat Kara, nursing from her mother and being led by her father, Amun. You see that? It's all there. Right in that little freeze, right? And it's interesting, it's inside of... Back. What's interesting? Well, that is inside. The structure. It's not just, right. It's just not outside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's inside. Yes, um, yeah. Uh huh. Yes. The sequence. Uh huh. Yes. Yep. Yes. So, this is, this is the long and short of this entire temple. Where she, the queen, says, Hey, I am legit. Too legit to quit. Huh? <laughs> My mother is Heteru, the goddess of this valley, the goddess of the main goddess of the south. And so is, and so is my father, the major deity of the south, Amun. Say greetings to everybody from the city of Waset, the temple of Iped Iset. I'm on Wally Bernard. This is my second journey here with Dr. Crawford and, and Mama Reba. We're having a wonderful experience. We've been walking around here in the, the temple Iped Iset, which is known as the Temple of Karnak. Uh, for the last hour, we've seen some magnificent reliefs and structures built. It's amazing the level of engineering and architecture that our ancestors were able to accomplish and to see these things five, four to five thousand years old, um, still vibrant with colors, uh, still standing strong and erect has been a phenomenal experience to share with um, myself and my family. Yeah. Yes, I'm bring my daughter on here. She's gonna see. <laughs> 
Tell them what you've experienced. Um, I've seen the Tekkens, the Merkut, and the Temples that our ancestors built thousands <laughs> of years ago. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's a magnificent journey to be able to walk through with both my daughter and my wife on this experience. Hopefully she's coming up now. So she can add to this testimonial. Um, this is my first time here um, visiting Kemet, uh, Aswan, Luxor. Um, just an amazing experience to just go into many of the temples and to still see the vibrant colors on the wall, just if they've just done it yesterday. Um, just amazing, just amazing. It's just so much to take in and will definitely aid in my studies when I return home. And just to highlight the trip, you know, we landed in Cairo, flew to Aswan, then from Aswan we sailed on the Happy, the Nile, back up to Luxor, and now we're, you know, so we're taking the journey that our ancient ancestors took. So to be walking in those footsteps and experiencing this, it kind of transports you back in time to put you back into what they were thinking, what they were feeling and what they were seeing. And it's just an amazing journal, journey that I recommend for every person of African descent. Mm -hmm. A must. A must. <laughs> was constructed, the, uh, the builders, or the architects of the structure dug down into the bedrock as it were and carved out a square base out of the live rock on which we stand. This is yet another temple complex and this one uh, was largely built by Ramses III. Ramses III is the last of the great pharaohs in Egypt. Ramses III admired Ramses II, his predecessor. There's no relationship so much that he even took part of his throne name. And you all know his throne name is Usir what? Ma'at Ma Ma Ra. 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 Okay, so the complex actually started in the 18th dynasty. Ramses the Ramses the third is the beginning of the 19th dynasty, and this particular complex is the most unique of all of the complexes that uh, our temples that you have seen. This Maudry Temple. Why? This is the only structure in all of Egypt that has a, a, a lookout, as it were. Um, um, usually we see a pylon forest, right? Mm -hmm. But in this instance, we see the fortress. And um, on the fortress, we see the now familiar canical uh, uh, display of the pharaoh, Ramses III, smiting his enemies before Amun, Amun Ra. Amun Ra with a feathered, feathered crown to our right. And, and it's repeated on both sides. Now, why did Ramses III build a fortress like this? Now, at this point in time, at the beginning of the 19th dynasty, um, Egypt was at war with the Sea People, uh, people coming from areas, uh, uh, the Hittites, and people from the, the Mediterranean Sea, and they were also being attacked by the Libyans as well. And so Ramsey inherited this conflict. Remember, Ramses II was involved uh, with conflict with the people, the Hittites, and that battle continued after Ramsey's death. Now, these openings that you see here would have been openings where, uh, where soldiers, infantry people would have been looking out. Because right where we are over here, to, to my left, was a, was a, uh, a quay. Uh, a canal that brought that brought um, brought storage and so forth uh, things for this for this complex. Also, 
I'm going to begin to tell you some of the salaciousness about Ramses III. Ramses III had many wives as well as Ramses II. That is many as Ramses II though, right? And it is believed, I've never been up there, but we are told that the illustrations uh, of Ramses in his harem. Ramses had a lot of young women as part of that harem. I know if it's a good thing or a bad thing for these ladies to hear. Well, let's move in. No, I mean, back in the day, I guess it worked for them. <laughs> it wouldn't work now. <laughs> okay, so when you look back, you see what a formidable fortress this is. You have this wall, plus you have all this embankment here. And now we begin to see some of the illustrations. And I want you to pay careful attention because when you looked at Ptolemaic temples, you do not see this fineness. Look at, the, look at how the figures are modeled. You see the details with which, with which they're modeled? So we know that this is a New Kingdom Egyptian temple. Now, while this temple began its construction in the 18th dynasty, it went all the way. Other pharaohs began to uh, add to this complex as well, all the way into the 27th, uh, 26th and 27th dynasty. Now, this complex uh, retains some of the um, architectural structures that you could not find elsewhere. We only talk about them. There's a sanatorium over there, and there's also a, um, a nanometer. But on the outside, we get back there. Now, the pylon is completely massive. And Ramses, 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 uh, especially New Kingdom. Ramses III, in particular, built structures that was very intimidating to his enemies. So if you guys wanna, if you wanna get into battle, you have a fortress first to get past, and then secondly, you have a pile and a gateway that illustrates what I've done to all of my enemies. So you wanna, you wanna get into it? Let's go, right? So let's move forward here. Oh, how old it are? Yeah. I would say about 3,500 years old. Wow. Yes. All right. Now we're entering into the forest, to the forest pylon, and look up. You get to see the, you get to see Negbet, the protective, and Negbet went to war with the pharaohs as well. Look up. And here is a very important scene, Raharati. I want you to pay special attention to how tender the pharaohs uh, be, this particular field is being held by these gods. See the hands? It's not a group. It's a... And look here, my friends. Look how deep it is now. Now, here's the first open court. With Ramses standing. Of course, now most of it is these are, are destroyed. And again, they were destroyed during the Coptic Christian period all the way down. But over here is a further, more graphic illustration of these configurations that Ramses had with his enemies. You see people. So, Ramses sent his army into battle and he wanted to know what the spoils of war was. How many people were captured? So they, they become less of a threat to the empire. So here we have here a counting of the hands you know when in, in contemporary times you count the number of fallen soldiers by the boots? Here they come in my hands, they cut off the wrist, on the wrist. One hand. 
So we see examples of that there and there. All right. Okay. And we have the sons of Ramses. We're going to see a procession more of them. Ramses was not satisfied because you know you got two hands, right? So they could cut off, you could cut off two wrists or whatever. And that might that might that might be a misrepresentation of the number, right? So said, okay. Since I don't believe in that so much, they cut out the fallacies. Look here. Soldiers only have one of those. Can't mistake that. <laughs> right? There's no mistake for that. Wow. <laughs> okay. On the other side of the pylon, so you notice this is a warrior pharaoh. Yeah. Because all of these illustrations that we've seen so far is about him smiting and destroying his enemies. Conquering. Yes, conquering exactly. Thank you, honey. Now here again, we're gonna go across the court, right? Just as we saw, just as we saw at where? Where did we see something similar to that? Where? Where did we see a figure, a standing figure, and and figures next to them on the native Abu symbol? Yes. So these figures are building. They're building upon. They're It's a tradition. They continue the tradition. It doesn't matter 100 years or 200 years later. This tradition continues. Let's go to the opposite side of the court. Quickly. Oh, no, sorry. You get it every year. Yeah. Okay. Here is Ramses on his chariot with Negbet above him. See the chariot there with wheels? Yeah. And the horse. See the horse? Yeah. And the horses below trampling upon his enemies. Ramses was not playing. <laughs> Just like when I played Dominoes. <laughs> <laughs> Errol, <laughs> see here? It's not a game. It's a game. Right. So, we get the picture. We get the picture of Ramses. And, and listen, some of the same scenes you will see with Ramses II. As I said to you before, he modeled himself so much after Ramses the second that he wanted to replicate all of the military uh, prowess that was demonstrated by Ramses II. Ramses II had some sort, some of the set of also. Yes, yes, Ramses II. The Ban of Kadesh. Yes, Ban of Kadesh, yes, yes. This is not the Ban of Kadesh. This is a battle against the sea people and some of the Now, over here, we continue to see Look, coming, then coming, then coming closer, right? We continue to see the smiting. We call them two by fours, right? But he's holding a mace. Amun. Now, you notice that Amun, Amun 
takes on some of the same coloring as you would probably well, not really, but close to that of Bosaros. Bosaros has a greenish, greenish blue. And then you have the triad behind, behind Amun. What is so impressive about this particular, this particular scene here is what's taking place. One, Ramses is making that offering in the ingot. And he presents himself twice. See here, there? Smaller figure on top. Mm -hmm. And then he's pouring libation. Mm -hmm. Libation is not an alien concept to African people. This is not my first, it's not my second, but my third Sankofa. It's good to be here. Um, we are at Karnak Temple. I, I cannot put into words. No, I'm never short for words. I can find words for most things that I see and experience in my life. But every sojourn I make to Egypt, I'm at a loss for words. Um, especially when I return home and people ask me, how was it? I, I, there's no, there are no words that I could summon immediately to describe this journey. No words that I could summon immediately to talk about the connection I feel with some part of something that's etched into my DNA whenever I come here. Coming here is good for my soul. This is my third and absolutely not my final journey to Egypt. was constructed, the, uh, the builders, or the architects of the structure dug down into the bedrock, as it were, and carved out a square base out of the live rock on which we stand. <laughs> 